माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर गोडदेव ऋषिकेश एंड यू आर वाचिंग चैनल बीएससी क्लासेस स्टडीज हियर इन दिस वीडियो एज शोन इन द स्क्रीन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द इकोलॉजिकल ग्रुपिंग ऑफ प्लांट व्हिच इज द टॉपिक इज गिवन इन सिलेबस ऑफ बीएससी स्टूडेंट एज वेल एज 11th 12th स्टैंडर्ड एंड एमएससी स्टूडेंट हैव दिस टॉपिक आल्सो सो दिस वीडियो विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल टू यू I would request you to watch carefully the concepts which I am going to explain here. First of all, what is ecological grouping? Is the first question. Ecology means already we have discussed many aspect, almost twelve lectures I have discussed before starting this chapter. So I would request you to please watch. I have given the link in description. So ecology means study of ecosystem where you will find various types of habitats. Habitat means the area or region where generally organism occur. the region is affecting upon the organism's morphology what does it means the region if as shown in the figure the region is snowy region where you will find the ice falling from the sky definitely the organisms which are living in such environment will have to adapt in certain condition opposite to that if the xerophytic condition is there where water availability is not there then the organism who are living in that area will have to adapt in per particular perspective way so if organisms are living in moderate condition then though some organisms will show differences in their architecture in body organization and physiology also so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the ecological grouping the organisms are grouped with respect to the habitat so on the basis of mainly the availability of water please highlight this sentence the availability of water is main criteria to differentiate different different habitat if the organism is completely growing inside the water then we will have the hydrophytic type of ecological grouping of that organisms so first type which we are going to discuss is hydrophytic environment where organisms are living inside the water with respect to the plants their hydrophytic plant is the topic of our discussion on other hand if organisms are living in the area where no water availability is there then the xerophytic habitat is there so the second point which we will be discussing is xerophytic habitat on the basis of that xerophytic plants which are growing in particular area on other hand if plants are growing in water but the sea water or ocean water then that category is known as halophytic category so here i have highlighted hydrophytic xerophytic and halophytic categories which we are going to discuss and fourth the category in which the plants around us where we are living is a moderate condition where availability of water is moderate due to the rainfall we get water the plant get water so these plants as shown in the photograph generally are very big plants these are mesophytic plants the hydrophytic xerophytic halophytic and mesophytic types of plants which we are going to discuss in a detail first of all we will discuss about the hydrophytic plants the ecological grouping includes four major categories in which we are going to discuss first hydrophytic category of plant so what are these hydrophytic plants the ancestor of these plants please remember ancestor of these plants were mesophytic means they were generally occur on the terrestrial area is mesophytic plant but due to the course of evolution plants have migrated into the fresh water the drinking water which is not saline water so the plants which occur in such a fresh water are known as hydrophytic plant sometimes people call them as macrophytic plants macrophytic plants also so the they have two names hydrophytic and macrophytic we call them as hydrophytic plant because it is given in your syllabus so the hydrophytic plants again will show some modification with respect to live in water so which type of modifications are there so this is the main key point which we are going to focus in today's lecture these hydrophytic plants are again divided into four categories morphological sense we can differentiate hydrophytic plant which are growing in fresh water into four different categories as i have shown here the plants which are completely floating on the surface of water the plants which are completely floating their roots are not attached to anywhere 
they are just floating on the water surface such plants for example very well known example is ecornia in marathi it is called as jalaparni these ecornia plants reproduces vegetatively and creating their members by offset type of vegetative reproduction these ecornia plants produces poorly developed roots why poorly developed obviously there will be no function of absorption of water because they are already present in water so this ecornia type of plant as as i have shown in the photograph there are various different different types of plants in free floating category the second category is the rooted but floating category of hydrophytic plant what does it means it means that the plant which contain roots they are submerged in the water but their leaves are floating on the surface of the plant many water lily type of plants comes in this categories where you will find very beautiful flowers which are present on this plant their main roots are submerged in the water and they have attached to the surface or soil which is present in the water so this plant occur in the area where you will find shallow water is present shallow water means uthal uthal pani means very less height of the water is there in ponds generally you will find these types of plants are present the third category is rooted but totally submerged plants means what the plants which have roots they have attached to the surface or the soil and the overall other portion of the plant is also submerged in the water means what these plants will be visible when there is no water in that area during summer you will find these plants had there because the water is evaporated and the remain of this plant can be visible after removal of water in that area so this we have seen the three general categories the floating plant rooted floating plant and totally submerged plant and the fourth category is very interesting where you will find the plants which are uh, available at the amphibian zone means at the shore zone means at the margin of the river you will find these types of plants where half portion is submerged in the water and half portion is exposed to the environment so these four categories of the plant in fresh water category of plant just we have seen i have tried to show you photographs with the labels so it will be helpful to remember these types of uh, different different plants which comes in the fresh water category so now we have seen the differences in categories of fresh water let's discuss about the external character and internal features of these hydrophytic plants so this external feature of these plants in hydrophytic category shows very interesting phenomenon where plants for example ulfia which is known as a smallest angiospermic plant which produces flowers very minute plant still produces flowers shows completely absence of roots many competitive exams include this question the smallest angiospermic plant is ulfia as shown in this figure the ulfia plant shows absence of root on other hand if the roots are present in some other hydrophytic plants these roots are very poorly developed the root cap is absent generally root cap is performing the function of it to elongate the root length but root cap is absent on other hand root cap is replaced by the root pockets you have to remember this some hydrophytic plant shows the presence of root in adventitious type of manner but no branching is there adventitious roots type are present in such hydrophytic plants and some roots are adventitious roots are modified into the aerial roots obviously these roots are performing the role to give floating nature to that plant so whatever we have discussed is generally uh, we can say with respect to the roots only because roots generally perform the function of absorption and anchoring but here water is directly present in water so these functions are remaining aside on other hand they are poorly developed and some feature i have just explained here you need to remember this now let's discuss about the internal feature the beautiful diagram is shown in the background where we have shown the transverse section of 
द हाइड्रोफाइटिक प्लांट वॉट इज ट्रांसफर सेक्शन एवरी वन नोज वेन वी टेक सेक्शन ऑफ द प्लांट फॉर एनाटॉमिकल स्टडी दिस सेक्शन आर ऑफ वेरियस टाइप we can take vertical section we can take longitudinal section and we can also take the transverse section as shown here the transverse section shows the layers presence and majorly the air chambers are present here so why this air chambers are here so the air chambers provides buoyancy which helps to floating these plants and other layers are also there each layer perform their functions the ts is of root of ecornia plant where you can find the outermost layer is epidermis air chambers are there the endodermis is there the stellar region is also there which is very poorly developed what is stellar region the vascular bundles which are mainly present inside the endodermis region is stellar region which is very poorly developed you need to highlight this and at the center you will find the pith is present the air chamber which we have just said we have seen here are the member of the cortex region the cortex is the area which contain the parenchymatous cell these cells perform the function of storage of food so these layers just we have discussed you need to remember in exam maybe they will ask you to draw the structure of the ts of the root of hydrophytes so just we have seen the external and internal feature of the roots of hydrophytes let's move to the external and internal feature of the stem in hydrophytes so here we are discussing external feature of the stem in hydrophyte where the stem is very interestingly performing the role not only the photosynthesis because it is green in color but also these stems are involved in reproduction mainly by the offset method so these stems morphologically if you see are slender why these stems are slender because in second category where rooted floating hydrophytes where roots are uh, present inside the soil under water and the leaves are present outside the water so the middle portion which covers by this hydrophyte is due to the stem these stems are generally slender and greenish in color maybe if light is available they can perform the function of photosynthesis is the key feature as well as they can perform reproduction by offset method please highlight this point and in many cases it has seen that the stem is growing horizontal to the water on the surface of water to cover the surface of water for that purpose these stems are very useful it was the external feature with the help of diagram i am trying to show you here now we are going to discuss the internal feature of the stem so the diagram here is presenting the internal feature where different different cell layers are there these cell layers are performing the function where you can find the outermost layer of the stem anatomy showing the epidermis and the center pith is present the vascular bundles are there and the vascular bundles are covered by the endodermis region so cortex is also there which is performing the function of storage of food the cortex contain always parenchymatous cell you will find there is no major difference in cell architecture in ts of root and ts of stem you have to remember this cell layers the outermost layer the innermost layer the vascular bundle tissue vascular bundle mainly consists xylem and phloem so the xylem definitely will be poorly developed phloem conduct the food material the food material means what the food material means the whatever photosynthesis performed by the plant which is in the leaf need to transfer in the root so in the phloem it get transferred in the form of sucrose so remember this this vascular bundle and cortex epidermis endodermis below to the epidermis there is another layer so you have to remember this key features just we have discussed two features root and stem externally and internally so friends now we are moving to the third organ in the hydrophyte that is leaves of the hydrophytes this diagram showing the ecornia plant leaves where you will find the petiole is present what is petiole the stalk like material or substance present below to the photosynthetic region of the leaf the petiole is also performing the photosynthesis and some hydrophyte shows elongated petiole some hydrophyte shows short petiole but the leaf size shows variation if the plant is free floating in hydrophyte we have said four categories are there if the plant is free floating category then obviously the leaves will be large 
in another second category also where rooted but floating plants in that case also the leaves will be large but in third category submerged plant rooted submerged plant where you will find leaf size has been reduced in any case you will find the free floating category especially shows presence of waxy material on the surface of the leaf why would there waxy material is present because it is living in the water if water come on the surface of leaf it has to repel outside because it will create pressure and it will be responsible for the dying of that plant so to avoid this these plants leaves are covered by the waxy material so this surfaces in hydrophyte shows stomata number variation in opposite to the normal plant which are present in mesophytic condition in mesophytic plant stomata number are more on the lower surface and stomata number are less on upper surface in mesophytic plant here it is opposite that stomata number are more on upper surface and stomata number are less on the lower surface this plant are not afraid of transpiration because there is plenty of water available they need not to worry about the transpiration or loss of water we can say in common language so externally these leaves like this how they look internally is our next point here is the section diagram i have shown you the beautiful figure shows the ts of the leaves in hydrophyte so the ts showing the presence of epidermis but there are presence of hair on the epidermis which is key feature you need to highlight this below to the epidermis there is hypodermis because hypo means below below to the epidermis that is hypodermis and the cortex is showing presence of air chamber these air chambers are much larger obviously it creates buoyancy such for example when you go to swimming the new person generally tie up the tire around it so it will not submerge into the water likewise these leaves contain air chamber so leaves remain floating on the surface of water as well as the key feature is the presence of sclerides in the air chamber of this cortex region of the ts of the leaves the sclerides performing their role air chamber performing their role the hypodermis epidermis the epidermis contain hair like region as well as the vascular tissues contain xylem and phloem which is remarkable and showing on the ts of the leaves section here so just we have discussed about the hydrophytes in a detail the four different types of hydrophytes as well as internal and external feature of root stem and leaves stay tuned in next lecture we will discuss the remaining three part of the ecological grouping of the plant we have completed hydrophyte halophyte mesophyte and xerophyte are remaining so we will meet in our next lecture thank you for your time and don't forget to subscribe bye